Hey, I'm Kez Bracey for Tuts Plus. In this video, we're going to give you a quick start tutorial on working with the WordPress Gutenberg editor. All right, so before you even look at Gutenberg, before you do anything else, the first thing that you want to do is update everything on your site. So update your theme, whichever theme you're running, and update all of your plugins. A lot of theme and plugin developers have made changes to their software to make sure that it's compatible with Gutenberg. And also in some cases they've added new features that take advantage of Gutenberg. So to help you get those new features and to avoid possible conflicts or broken functionality, make sure that you update everything on your site first. The core of how the Gutenberg editor works is something called blocks. And you can break down working with blocks into three essential concepts. Insert your blocks, configure your blocks, sort your blocks. Let's take a closer look at each of those three concepts. After you've created a new post or page and you've added in a title, and by the way, that title is separate to the rest of the system. It's not itself a block. You're ready to start inserting blocks into your content. There are a few ways that you can insert new blocks. This is a block that's in here by default and I can add some text to it. Now, if I wanna add new blocks, I can hit enter. That creates a new block. I can hit this plus button up here and then select the type of block. That creates another new block. I can hover over an existing block, move my mouse up to the center of one of the borders and that will give me another plus symbol that I can use to add a new block. I can also click inside a block so that I get this toolbar appearing. There are three dots on the end here. For more options, I can click that and then from here I can choose insert before to create a block above, or I can click insert after to create a block below. I can also use keyboard shortcuts to do the same thing. So if I click this block here, if I want to insert a block above, I can press control alt T. Or if I want to insert a block below, I can press control alt Y. Once you've added a block in, if you need to delete it, you can click inside it, open up the options and choose remove block or you can use the shortcut shift alt Z. So that covers all the way that you can insert blocks. Now let's talk about how you can configure blocks. The most important element of block configuration is deciding what block type you want to use. Blocks are designed to be sort of like Lego, where you have a different type of block for each purpose, and then you assemble them to create the end result that you're looking for. The default block that's added when you first create a new page or post is a paragraph block. But if you come up to this plus button up here to add a block, you'll see all these other types of blocks that you can use as well. So we've got paragraphs for normal text. We've got headings. We've got lists for bullet lists and numbered lists, images, block quotes. And then if you open and collapse these different sections, you can see a whole bunch of extra types of content as well. Things like inline images, a classic block, which you can use to make the editor work more like the original tiny MCE editor, tables to give yourself presentation options, columns to give yourself layout control. There's a whole bunch of different types of blocks in here and you can install plugins and custom themes that will add even more types of custom blocks that you can use to assemble your content with. But the most commonly used types of blocks that will comprise the majority of your content are paragraphs, images, and headings. If I hit enter and create a new block, and then I hover over this newly added block. Over on the right, there is a shortcut to add these most commonly used blocks. So this is already a paragraph by default, but if I click this button, it will turn it into a heading. And then in the next block, if I click this button, it will turn it into an image. From here, I can upload a new image and have that automatically inserted into my content. So that's the quickest and easiest way to add in those most commonly used blocks, but there are other ways as well. I can also hit enter, then type a forward slash. That will give me a pop-up with a whole bunch of different blocks in here to easily choose from. If the one that I want isn't there in this short list, then I can just start typing the one that I want to use. Let's say, for example, I want to put in some columns. I can start typing columns and it will find columns in the list for me. Then I can click it and that has inserted a column block for me. You also have the option to change a block type after you've already added it. So if I click in this paragraph block and then go up to this button in the toolbar here, it will give me a list of the types of blocks that I can convert a paragraph into. You can't convert any type of block into any other type of block. There are only certain types of blocks that are interchangeable. 
For example, you can't turn an image into a heading, but you can take regular text like this and turn it into a heading like so. That covers everything that you need to know about working with block types. The other important element of configuring blocks is working with block specific settings. Every block has settings in two spots. It has its own toolbar. So if I click inside this block, I have these settings along the top here and the types of settings that you have are different for different types of blocks. With a paragraph block, I have alignment options for the text and I have the ability to bold and italicize and add links. But with an image, I have the option to control the alignment of the image, left, right, center. I have the option to set it to a wide image or a full width image. And I also have the option to edit the image. But you might find that it's awkward to always click on top of an image and then find its toolbar along the top here. So if you don't like that, what you can do is go up to the top right of the screen here and click on these three images and then choose top toolbar here, access all block and document tools in a single pane. Now, the toolbar for the block that you have selected will appear along the top here. We've covered the type of block settings that you can see in a blocks toolbar, but you also have a whole bunch of extra settings that are available in the right sidebar. You'll see we have this tab here, block, and whatever block you have selected will show additional settings in this area. So if I select the paragraph block, then over here we can see some extra settings like changing the font size and setting a drop cap to be active. You can close this area here if you need more space, but just remember to open it back up again once in a while to see if any of these settings give you additional things that you want to work with in your content. All right, so we've gone over inserting blocks and we've gone over configuring blocks. Now we can talk about the third of the key concepts of working with Gutenberg, and that is block sorting. All of these blocks are designed to stack on top of each other. In this example right now, we have a paragraph block stacked on an image, stacked on a heading, stacked on another paragraph block. And we can change the order that these blocks are sorted into. And there are a couple of ways that we can do this. One, if we hover over the block, you'll see that we have these little up and down arrows. So if I want to move this block up, then I can just click the up button. Likewise, if I want to move one down, I just click the down button. You'll also see in between those two little blocks is this little collection of six dots right here. And this is where you can drag and drop a block. So if I hover over here, I can then grab, drag, and you'll see that I get this blue line showing me where the block is going to appear when I drop it. And there's an additional way to sort. You can also move multiple blocks at the same time. To do this, just put your mouse inside one of the blocks and then just click and drag until you have as many blocks as you need selected. From there, you don't have the ability to drag and drop, but you do have access to the up and down arrows to move those blocks at the same time. And sometimes it might not always be easy to select a block with your mouse in order to be able to move it around and sort it to where you need it to be. One of the cases where this might be a problem is if you're working with columns. Here I have a column block that has this left column here and this left column here, and I might find it difficult to select the external column that's wrapping these two paragraphs that are in the individual columns. This is when the block navigator up in the top left comes in handy. If I click this, it shows me my top level of blocks. So then I can directly select here to get access to the columns and to see their individual settings. From there, I can also click inside those columns, open up the block navigation, and I can navigate inside the block as well. Now you've seen how to insert blocks, configure blocks, and sort blocks. We're going to talk about how you can get unstuck and solve some of the most common problems that people have working with Gutenberg. The first problem that we're going to look at a solution for is the issue of the editing space being too narrow. A lot of people find that there's not enough room to type the content that they want to into this space. You can solve this problem by installing the plugin Editor Full Width Gutenberg. Once that's activated, it will remove any width confinement from the editor styling and it will allow it to fill up the entire page. But bear in mind that some themes do include their own editor style sheet that's designed to make the editor look like your site is going to look on the front end. And if you have a theme that's doing that, it might prevent this plugin from applying its own styling. So if that's a problem, just find a theme that allows you to have this full width editor. The next problem that a lot of people run into is making text wrap around an image. 
So I'm going to show you how to deal with that and make this text here wrap around this image here. So what you want to do is select the image and then set the image to a line on the left or a line on the right. So we're going to do that. And now you can see that this text here in a paragraph that was placed below the image is able to fill up the available space on the side. You can also use these little drag handles to decrease the size of the image so that the text has more room to wrap around. Another common complaint that I've seen that people have with working in Gutenberg is that there's no ability to justify text. Unfortunately for now, that is the case with a paragraph block. There's nothing that you can do that's going to allow you to justify text in a paragraph block. But you can justify text in a classic block, which basically gives you a mini version of the old editor inside your post as a self-contained block. So if I add a paragraph of text in here, I'm actually still not going to see a justify button up here, but there is a shortcut that works. And that shortcut is shift alt J and that will justify my text. The caveat here is that you can only use this justifying technique in a self-contained classic block. You cannot combine this block with other blocks. For example, you can't put a classic block inside a media and text block because when you save it, Gutenberg will tell you that what you've done is not valid and it will strip that portion of content out of your post. So for now, this is the only way. Add a classic block, insert your text, and then press Shift-Alt-J to justify it. The classic block also gives us a solution for another common problem that people have, and that is that you don't always want your paragraphs to be separate self-contained blocks. Sometimes you want to have all of your paragraphs combined into a single item. With a classic block, if you hit enter, you don't create a new block, you just create a space, then you can add in another paragraph. So you can have as many paragraphs in here as you want in a single block. There's one more issue that I've seen people have run into that there is a solution for, and that is how to work with editing HTML directly. There is the ability to go up to this top toolbar here, hit these three dots and switch into code editor. And you'll then see the entire post in HTML format. But you might not want to edit the entire post in HTML format. You might just want to insert a small snippet of HTML into a specific block. You actually can do that. The way to do it is to click into the block in question, go into the more options area, choose edit as HTML, and you'll then get access to the HTML for that block. And you'll be able to add in any little snippet of custom HTML that you need to. Just bear in mind though, that in many cases, blocks will have validation applied to them. And anything that's considered outside of what's supposed to be in that block won't pass validation. And you might end up needing to delete that block if it gets sort of corrupted. So by all means, edit the HTML of your blocks directly, but whatever HTML you do put in, try to make sure that it's HTML that fits with that block type. All right, so that's our quick start tutorial on the WordPress Gutenberg editor. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.